What's up, everybody? We're live, direct, New York City. It's rainy out there. Everyone's playing hooky, so I'm doing this solo. No, I'm lying. Uh, Tyler's next door. He's going to come make a cameo at the end, but he's busy. And uh, really, you know, she'll be here any second, presumably. So, starting solo, and hopefully the reinforcements will arrive uh, with the real deal information at some point. Um, but, we got a brand new Merino right underneath here. Um, talk about plus the return of the Overkill Mesh tanks. So, good stuff going on. Um, if I guess you can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I'm going to get down from the pedestal and let's get into some products. Here we go. Boom. Day dry. Merino. Brand new. Out the gate. 75% Merino. 16.5 micron. Top capped. There's Willie coming in. This is the good shit, the beautiful shit, the soft shit, the performance shit, the dry shit. What kind of shit is it, Willie? Did I? <laughs> we had something to do it. It's good shit. It's the good shit. Yeah. Quality shit. Yeah. You know it's how we do. Shit. We know how. Yeah. There we go. It's, it's missed right now. It's missed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> All right. Day dry merino. Um, and then we got the overkill oh. mesh, if that's more your vibe. Um, that's a redux though, so let's talk about this merino. Um, get into the hard facts, right? 75% merino, 16.5 micron, which is I think a super 140. Um, it's top capped, right? So what that means um, is that the, the biggest micron, the micron is the thickness of the, of the fibers themselves, right? The, the merino staples. The biggest one is 16.5, so probably averages more like 16.2. It's tight spectrum, um, so that means there's not a lot of range, right? So when you, 16.5 is an average, right? And um, if it's not top capped and it's not a tight spectrum, you could have like 20s and 10s in there, right? Um, a big mix, but like the big ones are what you feel. So top capping it makes a huge difference in how well it feels. Um, from Australia, responsible wool standard, merino, um, beautiful stuff. And um, 16.5 micron. 75% um, of the content is that. And then the new stuff, the magic, the excitement, the synergy is... Um, Got 25% of a biodegradable polyester called Cyclo. Um, you know, and biodegradable polyester is not brand new, but it's been slow. It's like in the um, incremental evolutionary stage, right? It gets better and better every year. Little, little tweaks and details. Um, and the other really nice thing is that, like, we're, we're really amped on this particular blend. We've been doing in the past, like, 50 50 blends of Merino and Poly. And Merino Poly, here, I'm go straight on the camera for Tyler. He loves it when I'm on the camera. Um, Merino and Poly blend super, super well together because they combine two very different types of dryness, right? So Merino, you know, wool is, the, is really the only common fiber that stays dry when it's wet, that still insulates when it's wet. Right, actually linen feels dry, but it doesn't insulate, right? Um, and then cotton just feels wet, right? Most fibers feel wet. Um, wool, merino can suck up lots and lots of moisture, um, like 25, 30% of its weight in moisture. Um, but it sucks up water vapor mostly. In most circumstances, it's just sucking up water vapor and it's actually repelling like liquid water slightly because it has a lanolin coating on the outside. So what that means is it's removing, like, when you're sweating, like, when you're not, like, running a race, when you're, like, your average sweat is vapor, and it's sucking it up, it's taking it away, and because it's repelling liquid water, it feels dry still, um, and that allows it to insulate, too, right? It, it, it's crimped, it has air bubbles, so it can stay warm. That's why Merino has, like, such a beautiful, wide temperature range of comfort. Um, and so that's Merino dryness, right? It's, like, literally removing the moisture from the air and storing it inside the fiber so that you can't feel it, right? And that's why it feels so nice and creates that nice dry body climate. Polyester is dry for a very, very different reason. 
polyester feels really dry because it absorbs almost no moisture. 0.4% of its weight gets absorbed, right? So like the water has to go somewhere, but polyester like likes to whip, right? Like water wants to spread really rapidly across the surface of the polyester. Um, and that increases the surface area, which means it evaporates really quickly. And since it's not holding any moisture, it feels really dry. And then the liquid or whatever that's there, like the vapor will just pass through and the liquid that might stick on it will evaporate really quickly. So you get two different types of dryness and we combine them together into the day dry. And again, this is our new favorite blend, 75% Merino, 25% polyester. Um, again, it's a biodegradable polyester from Cyclo. Um, just super super nice so one of the, the synergies like the synergy the hidden benefit to it all um is that you know merino is a crimped fiber right it's kinky right it's got lots and lots of curls if you think about a sheep right like what's growing on them there it, it's curly and then it, and when you stretch it out it snaps back right and so merino likes to collapse right it likes to snap back and close up right which can be really nice if you're trying to make something really nice and warm but um, if you're trying to make something that's, that's really open and breathable, it can have some you know, drawbacks to it. And when you start mixing the polyester in there, polyester is generally just like a straight fiber, right? It can be crimped or whatever. Um, it, uh, when you mix in the polyester, you're adding a little bit of straightness, and so that allows the fibers to stay a little bit more open, right? So that you get more breathability in them. So that's why I like those old run weights and sport weights breathe better for some people because um, they were literally like propping the material up so there's lots and lots of airflow um, through it. So there you have it. That's the beautiful blend. Um, it's 150 GSM so it's a nice lightweight. It's not like an ultra light. It's just like your kind of like basic lightweight. Um, really, really versatile. Um, and it's in our, what we're calling the mean tea. We might change this name. This is you know, basically, the if you're familiar with the uh, Dreamweight Normies, it's basically the same cut. We didn't really like the Normie name. We got tired of it. Mean Tea is our new name. It's, you know, trending towards the average, but it's not average. Um, it's just moving that direction. Um, but it's a very versatile cut. Um, we're thinking about maybe in the future it might become cut zero. You know, it's, it doesn't really fit in the cut, you know, numbers one, two, three. It's like kind of in the middle. Um, but it is... Uh, yeah, I think Cut Zero is feeling right. What do you think, Willie? I like Cut Zero a lot. My yeah. Brain, my brain understands it much <laughs> better. It's the baseline. It's yeah. the easy one. Yeah. Um, I like me. Right. I like me too. To you too as well. But uh, yeah. Cut, yeah. Cut Zero. Is like, yeah. Cut Zero. It cuts right to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Cut Three exists. I don't know. Um, cut Three exists. You can get it in. Uh, right now um, cut 1.5 is just that there's no juice to that nope. it's got no flair no <laughs> can't do that <laughs> <laughs> um, all right is what do you want to talk about with? uh we have black too oh yeah it's suck colors um sizing whatever uh i got black on too uh, we called it i think dry black you know the poly dulls out the black a little bit um you know, like pure merino can get really, really black. It looks pretty black here. Um, but, you know, we're calling it dry black. It's actually blacker than it's showing on the screen right now. And then this is uh, Storm Navy. Uh, these are based off our reference colors. But the colors are really, you know, that, that's sort of one of the drown sides to this blend, right? The colors in the, when you're mixing poly and merino, they dye with two different dye stuffs. So it's really, really hard to like dial in the colors the same way that you can when you're just dialing one of them, right? Because when you change the chemistry, it's reacting differently in two different materials. Um, but you can see like here's the dry black up against, um, behind it is the overkill black, right? So you can see um, the difference. Super wearable. I wouldn't call this a dark gray, would you? This? No, this. Now this is a black, right? Would, and most people, I think, are going to see this as a black. Not call this. Dark yeah. Gray. It's like someone asked what uh, storm black compared. How how close is storm navy to anthracite? It's not that. It's not. I mean, I haven't looked at it. I wouldn't compare. This is so, based off the dark navy reference color, 
not the anthracite reference color, uh, but I haven't put the two next to each other, honestly, so uh, it's hard to say. All right. Uh, Tyler should come at some point. Yeah, we told Ty he should be coming. I can. If you want to know what shirt you're wearing, Willie? This is like an old silk shirt. Yeah. Not a lot. Ah, there we go. Here, um, I'm I'm wearing it, so I, we can do the reveal. If we want. Um, I size up in this. It's it works very well. True, like you get like a really, the, you know, like the mean, the average cut from a true size. I like a slightly larger cut, so I can slightly more. XL. Cool shoes. Yeah, these are um, pull up shoes. These just showed up today. There's no peak. There's no peak balances. Uh, um, fresh out the box. Um, they're pretty comfortable, but I would recommend if you're looking at them, maybe sizing up a half a size uh, for width in particular. They're borderline. I'm like not suffering in here, but I certainly would be appreciate my toes would like a little extra. <laughs> cool. I had to switch to a thinner sock. Um, but yeah, this is straight up. This is washed. We washed a little bit. Um, you can see like, again, like this is me sized up, so like it's like slightly off the shoulder sized up, um, one size. And so like true size, you're probably, you know, you're supposed to be getting like a good square on the shoulder. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, great. It's, it's just like a really, really easy to wear. And Ooh, Tyler looks sweatshirt. good behind you. Oh, here comes Tyler. Whoa. Tyler, Tyler's rocking some. Okay, I didn't know he had a model booked for this. Embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you look great, though. Here, let me talk to you. All right. Tyler's got the other product. Look at that. Overkill mesh tank rocking. Medium, size medium. Size medium, true to size. We changed the sizing on the overkill mesh, so. If you're familiar with the sizing, we increase the size. Everything is one size bigger. You know? So like, uh, this is a medium. Compared to last year, yeah. yeah. So this would be uh, would have been a size large in the last run, right? So Correct. everything's fitting a little bit bigger than it did last run. Uh, and so the result is you get like a, a sort of snug but not tight fit with this, which we seems to be more like what people are liking. Like we had sized it a little bit more for a compressive fit. You can still do that by sizing down. This stuff's super stretchy, so there's a lot of variance. And this is a small. You're right. This is a medium. This is medium, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And like all last year, I wore a large. Okay. Because uh, it's more comfortable mm -hmm. for me, so this is perfect for me. That's well, basically the same size you were wearing before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is perfect medium for me. Uh, all right. Speaking of which, uh, we only have an unwashed. I don't think we. This is an unwashed medium. I don't think we have a washed medium for you. Don't. Uh, it's my bad. All right. Well. We can throw a Tyler in an unwashed medium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll shrink a little bit after this. This is unwashed medium. Uh, true to size on Tyler, but again, it'll shrink slightly in length. It's got a little sticker back there saying that it has not, do not wash. Yep. Gonna uh, keep track. And then I don't know if people want to see up or down or whatever we got. What do we have? Oh, there's a few over there. Um, let's, let's get people, well here's a wash large, actually that'll be a good one to compare, it's a different color, but wash large. Get the whole transformation with the overkill mesh underneath for the fire. Um, so there you can see, this one's also got a tag back there, you see it. It's pretty nice too, but again, yeah. you get yeah, sized up looks mm -hmm. good. It's, you get like a really sl good. slight off the shoulder, um, boom, and six foot, one sixty five pounds. That accurate today. One sixty three. Coming back to Yeah, one sixty three. You guys, winter's supposed to do the other things to you. Um, you do too healthy. Uh, oh wait, wasn't there another? Oh, small. We could try small. Uh, is it here? I think, I don't know, I didn't get everything. Small. Yeah, small. Small so, wash. Small wash. Um, all right, let's look at some questions. Fighter weight, yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, talking about merino holes. So, you know, the poly will, 
make it a little bit stronger. Like the, you know, Merino gets holes for two reasons, two or three reasons. Yeah, that one feels a little too small. All right, so size down. I mean, if you want a tight fit, you can rock it, but yeah, so this is size small. Yeah, so this unwashed, is right? Unwashed. Yeah. yeah, so shrink mostly in length though, so you can see you get that kind of like tight chest. If that's the vibe you want, then yeah, I guess you could size down. Uh, but it, I don't know if this vibe for us. Um, holes in merino. So yeah, having the polyester will reduce it a little bit. But the main reason that like merino gets holes, I'm gonna go on camera, um, is generally from like clothing moss or like carpet beetles. Clothing moss is the most common. Um, and if they're eating holes in your merino, you gotta get rid of them. It's a pain in the ass to get rid of them. Uh, cedar doesn't do much, but um, there are traps you can get. And you can also, you know, like put your merino in sealed containers and shit. Um, and just get rid of the goddamn moss. You can do it. It's not impossible. It just sort of takes a long time. I've had them. It sucks. You like eating your fucking clothes. They actually like to eat my linen more than they like to eat my merino, honestly. Um, Buffet. And, uh, but yeah. Knock on wood, I, I got rid of them. They're certainly down now. They're, they're gone. I hope they don't come back. Um, and so, yeah, that's like the one reason. And the other thing can be wear, you know, like merino is pretty durable but we use really fine and thin you know lighter weights right like the lighter it goes like you know the, the when we go under 200 gsm we like to use a blend right because like merino under that like pure merino under that's just not that durable um and so the the blends like the polys or the nylons strengthen them up and do other things as well at performance um so you get a little bit of extra strength but we're cutting down the weight so there's a trade-off right so like we're sort of compensating um, so from a pure durability standpoint, like a heavier merino, like if you really, really want a durable merino, you want to go to like a 200 GSM blend or something like that. Um, and so, you know, if it's the moss eating it, then you got to get rid of the moss. If it's abrasion, then a lot of times it's very localized. Like I used to get little holes, like I used to, um, when I was biking on my own bike, now I use the city bikes mostly, but like when I was biking on my own bike all the time and I would throw a chain around my waist all the time, and that chain would eat little holes in the merino, right? Um, the chain lock. And so that kind of repeated abrasion back and forth. So occasionally people with backpack straps and stuff can get that sort of same sort of thing, right? Repeated, consistent, things that you do every day, like every time you wear the shirt, same kind of abrasion that, that often like can cause little holes. So if you can identify that and remove it from your life, right? Sometimes it's just weird like interactions between the belt and the shirt or something, right? Like, and if you can identify that and remove it, then you're going to get more durability out of your merino. Uh, so that's merino durability. What pants do you wear, Tyler? Uh, i got to put you back on camera. Uh, future yeses. Yeah, it's like a nice yes. Let's see the uh, waistband. Size small. Uh, size small, yes. Size small, future yeses coming really soon. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, is this so here's a question and so is this the first LRT with the sewn in tag well first of all tags are not sewn in tags indicate like disposable paper things that get pulled off so we've never used a tag ever, uh, ever. basically uh, we do use woven labels there's one here but it's not on the merino t-shirt the merino the, the day dry has no woven label it has just uh, one one sticker that has uh, it. is a special edition. And <laughs> the sti only... We can take the stickers off if we want. Uh, I think they're done. Their utility's done. Stickers off. Just, we just gotta. I'm gonna post this on. Um... Do not. The blue is unwashed. <laughs> we just gotta remember that the storm, storm navy is unwashed. Um, but yeah, there's no, um, there's no woven labels sewn on these. There are woven labels sewn on the um, overkill mesh tank. Um, um, side label, like everything is a care construction, everything. Oh, yeah, care labels, yeah. And so care labels, yeah, I mean, they're, they're labels too, for the most part, they get close to a tag. Some some brands make them like very like, cut these out kind of, which like brings it into the tag territory. Um, let's see. The timeline is uh, What else? Any guys with a clip in? Uh, not at the moment. We're gonna look. We're gonna loop back on the um, single origin. The problem with the single origins is that the the volumes are quite high. What? 
Oh, uh, you want me on camera? Yeah, Tyler always wants me on camera. Oh, that is uh, Tyler is being stage dad, and I, I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I don't even know what I was talking Why about. Gosling? Why oh, guys, yeah, single origin. Guys, is an amazing single origin Marino. We sourced it a few times. It's incredible. Love it. Um, we stopped during the pandemic. I like, probably was like a touch to single origin. It was like a big part of it. But it's also just like a lot of logistics. And the big thing is that um, the wool locks get sold at like at quite high volumes. They're sold in like kilograms. We don't even like when we start talking to these people, they start talking to us in kilograms, and we're like, I don't know how many shirts is a kilo, you know? <laughs> like it, it's not our natural language. But but when you do the math, right? They're sold in in basically like two or three years worth of shirts, right? Which for us, right, at our size, at our scale. So that's kind of a lot commit to it at one given time and so it's a big project um and it worked with the goswick because there was a mill partner that had done the investment already right um they went ahead and they bought it and they committed and they didn't like force us to take all of it right um if we want to do it ourselves if we want to go proactively like without having that situation like you know handily laid out in front of us right um, we need to commit to the, to the whole lot and figure out how to use that whole lot, right? Which is either like finding other partners or committing to consuming it over, you know, two or three years or growing, right? Um, but Merino is like kind of capped market. Like it's mm -hmm. not like the space that we see dramatic growth in. Like there are certain people that love, love, love Merino. They buy lots of it and we love them and, and they are us. Um, but you know, there's also people that just they're like $125 for a t shirt, $110 for a t shirt. Are you kidding me? Right? And that's legit. Like, some people don't like the way Marino feels. I'm looking at you, Willie. Um, sometimes I do. I have to be, I'm, 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 mo I'm moody with my, with my dressing style. No, no, everybody's skin is yeah. different. Willie is a cotton girl, you yeah, know. I like cotton, she loves that Maybe. cotton. Um, and that's legit. Like that's the the fiber that works best with her skin type, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, merino works with a wide range of skin types. Like I'm personally have oily skin, and I love it because I hate like clamminess, right? But other people like it because they sweat a lot or they like the warmth, right? So there's a lot of different reasons to love merino. Um, but yeah, like basically, like we want to get back into the Goswick side of things, like the single origin super super fine um but it's expensive and we need to like grow the market to get there um what else do we got um let's see merino socks you know like they don't even make the yarn that we used to make our socks with anymore we just learned this um but we are like digging into socks again but no promises like that we literally cannot could not like source like that yarn again right um up front mega fine socks do you have a voice distortion on i don't think so i sound different I, it's a new year it's a new year new year, year, new year, year i don't know um Yeah, Nestnet. So Nestnet's cool. Like, so, like uh, somebody's mentioned Nestnet in terms of socks. Nestnet is um, Dane Nestor, right? So we used to make a socks at a place called Nestor in South North Carolina. Uh, Family-owned business, super cool, um, and they own Farm to Feet, right? Really nice American wool, made in America socks. Totally recommended. And uh, Nestnet is Dane. He's like the He's not like the black sheep. He's like the rainbow, the art sheep. He's the art school sheep of the family. Um, and he kind of spun off his own. I think he's got like one or two sock machines in his house. He's making really, really beautiful socks. He does it for 1733. I'm wearing some now. Oh, Willie's got some on I right now. Use. I don't know what they are Nestnet. or what collaboration they are. But but yeah, so shout out to Nestnet. Shout out to Dan. Um, and uh, yeah, they just did like some uh, Eckhouse Lada collab too, 1733. Really nice, artisanal, beautiful American socks. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they are a little thick. That is, like, they, they specialize in the warmer, thicker winter joints. Um, 
I don't know. I I use right now like I just use the different weights of the uh, the tact when I'm not wearing a nest net. Uh, the um, tactical socks from uh, uh, the people in Vermont. Darn tough, darn tough. And then the front of feet, same thing. They have some amazing ones too. Um, but you just gotta find the right weights. Uh, Paragon injects. Yeah, but we're hoping that like I think they came out really late last year. Um, so we're hoping to have uh, injects earlier this year. We'll see how it plays out. All right. What else do we got? I think we can hit the end of the questions. This stuff's going live in five minutes. Got anything else to say for the new year? Um, no. Do we want to answer this question? What color duck? What color duck? There's some colors. There's, I, there's, there's four. There's four colors of duck. Mm -hmm. There's no vanilla. There's no vanilla. No vanilla. There's no orange. There's no, <laughs> no orange. orange. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, next week. <laughs> that was Riley's choice. <laughs> next, no promises on next week, but um, those pants Tyler's wearing, uh, I think they're supposed to be delivered at the warehouse today. There's, oh, you know, like there's customs clearance and shit. Like so, like we we never want to make promises until they're sitting at the warehouse. So we don't have that confirmation yet, but that's what's slated. Um, and. Yeah, I think that's it. Anything else you got? Any last words for the for the new year? No first words. word, first words for the new years. There are no words. All right, later. Uh, wait, we got a skincare question before we go. Oh no, okay. You don't put it on. Um, no, you put it in your palm, yeah. and then you press it in. You don't rub it, and you don't put it on a cotton pad. All right. The cotton pad will sucks up all of it, and it's a waste of money. Yeah. There you go. That there sure you that is here. that's the million dollar um, tip. Uh, you must do here, and then do on the back of your hands too. Yeah, million dollar tip mm -hmm. from Willie. Um, and on that note, we're out of here. We just got peace. Uh, Enjoy the year. We just got news that the warehouse is going to shut down. Rain is the storm. Oh, well, yeah. There's some kind of rainstorm coming. Rain lately. Um, so. Shipping might be affected. Yeah. That's it. Shipping may be affected. It's also like the hangover from like the Christmas rush and the holidays. Shipping might be affected. So, um, no promises. But the stuff should be going live in three minutes. Day dry. I got it on right now. It's absolutely amazing. It's like the, the immaculate synergy of the daybreak and the sports weight and um, the high recommend you check it out and try it. Thank you, and I'm out. Peace.